Welcome back to Wayne TV. I'm Joel Gilly. We are here at the University of Mount Olive with some very special guests. Ladies, I want you to introduce yourselves to everyone who may not know. So we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Joy Kiefer. I'm the chair for nursing here at the university. All right. I'm Rebecca Niles, I'm director of pre-licensure program here at UMO. So we are here inside this beautiful classroom, this new classroom mm -hmm. for you guys. And, and this is part of the new nursing simulator program at UMO, right? Yes, we are starting a pre-licensure Bachelor of Science in Nursing, um, which means the kids that will come here will start from scratch, yeah. the, from their general education all the way through training them to be a registered nurse. Yeah. When they finish here, they will then sit for the NCLEX RN, which makes them a registered nurse in the state of North Carolina with a bachelor's degree. And that's a four-year program? It's a four-year okay. program. The first two years will be general history, math, science. Yeah. Once they have a GPA of at least a 3.0, then they will be a qualified applicant for the junior and senior year, which is all nursing, and that's where the sim lab comes into play. Wow. So this is a, a new facility. We were talking that, you know, these, these walls didn't exist you know, a, a short time ago. Um, and I think what's really cool is we were kind of walking around. It, you see the mannequins and you're used to the mannequins, but we were talking before we started filming that this program teaches you everything. You showed me a shower that's an ADA shower. Mm -hmm because you don't think about the fact that you have to train nurses in how to give baths and, and showers, right? I mean, that's crazy. Correct. Correct. This sim lab, this area used to be the stacks to the library. Um, and President Kroom uh, was up here filming one day in the beautiful forum we, uh, up at front, the foyer, yeah. and something happened to the camera. So he was wandering around the stacks talking to his son, who also was an alumni from Mount Olive College. And while he was wandering through the stacks, he says, you know, how often did you come up here in the stacks? And his son said, oh, Dad, I think I chased a girl or two up yeah. there, you know, whatever. And that's when President Kroom realized this is really underutilized space. Yeah. So right around Christmas of 19, um, excuse me, Christmas of 20, he said to me, hey, I think I've nailed down a spot for the sim lab. And by Easter of 21, Ceilings were ripped out, carpet was being ripped up, the wow. books were all stored, and this was born by July of 21. That's impressive. Yeah. So this is a new program for the university? Yes. It's, now, nursing's been around <coughs> for 10 years. Okay. We started with our online RN to BSN. That's where associate degree or diploma trained nurses come back and complete their degree for the Bachelor okay. of Science. Um, then we have three MSN tracks, a Master of Science in Nursing, one in Education, one in Administration, and then we have a dual track where you get both. Oh. This would then be our um, fifth program. Wow. This is the pre-licensure where we're actually going to have two programs running simultaneously. We have a daytime track for 50, you know, your classic kids that live in the dorm, yeah. uh, go home to mom and dad in the summer. Um, and then we are going to have 50 students in what we're calling our fast track, which is our night program. Mm. It's only for commuters. And the reason we're calling it fast track is because they don't need the dorms and the cafeteria, so they're going to yeah. go all summer. Where yeah. the other kids have to go home, they're actually going to complete the junior and senior year in 15 months, whereas the classic dorm kids in the daytime program have 18 months because yeah, they've yeah. got to go home. Exactly. So um, it's going to be great for folks that work all day because we'll have our didactic courses pretty much from 5 to 10 p.m. in the evenings and they'll do all their clinicals on the weekends. Wow. And they'll go straight summer. So how many people are typically involved in the nursing program every year? Uh, well, our other programs are all online. So those, those nurses are coming from yeah. all over the state. Some of them from other states. This program, we're going to max out at 100, 50 okay. day and 50 night. That's all we can take. Yeah. Um, we've been uh, uh, initially approved by the North Carolina Board of Nursing. That just happened in January. So we're opening our applications now for our very first class in August. So uh, in the, over the past 10 years, how many people have you guys cranked out? Oh, uh, we have over 400 alumni. Wow, yeah, that's four, cool. And we're fully accredited by CCNE. Um, and matter of fact, we have a CCNE visit uh, for a reaccreditation this September. So uh -oh. CCNE will be here. You guys got to start studying and, now. We're we're getting the self study <laughs> written as we speak. <laughs> right. That's, right. that's right. I think that's so cool because you know traditionally you don't you don't think of UMO as a, as a nursing program, you know, a nursing university. But I think that's really cool that you guys are branching out and and literally have some of the coolest technology to do it with. Yeah. I mean, you guys, it, it, you got to feel pretty fortunate, right? I mean, it was a wonderful yeah. gift from Dr. Morris. Doc, yeah. This this million dollar sim lab is a gift from Dr. Morris and we have made very good use of that man's gift. Uh, he is a phenomenal person to the university and to the church. 
um, and uh, we want to we want to honor him. As a matter of fact, our high fidelity sim man, we call him Dr. Tom. That's Tom. <laughs> I love back it. There, so. I love it. So we're gonna we're all, we are gonna walk through a little bit and, and see some of the really cool technology. But talk to us a little bit about what all you have here. So we have some some mannequins behind us. But correct. These are are not the smart mannequins. Correct. <laughs> They're what we call this is the low fidelity lab. Low fidelity means the mannequins are static. Yeah. They now we can do things to them, but they're not going to respond. So this is really where the students come to initially learn basic fundamentals. You know, how to move a patient, how to make a bed with a patient in it, how to brush their teeth, how to feed them. So you'll see, now these are all donated mannequins, by the way. We're taking donations. Uh, those three right there are actually me and my two kids. That was my Joy mannequin and my kids, Kiefer and Lori. I like it. And that mannequin was donated by the director of the Sim Lab, Dr. Melissa Beck. Uh, that's actually her dad. His name is Henry. So that's Henry. Wow. Um, but these mannequins are here to train the students in just the fundamentals and basics. Yeah. And they're dead weight. They're heavy. They're a real live body weight. Nice. So, yes. Um, and it, it, like I said, everything's recorded, audio and video recorded. Oh, that's so we something can, we didn't talk about. Yeah, yes. there's cameras all in here. We can, we can watch them engage. And then we move into the next room, which is debrief. Yeah. And that's a big part of training nurses. Uh, it's training all healthcare providers now. Um, in this day and age where everybody's raised with the phone. Yeah. We have to teach engagement now. Yeah. We have to, especially with patients who don't feel good. I mean, it's a different type of customer service. Yeah. So by recording everything, uh, these men and women get to watch what they look like and they can change and tailor how they're engaging with patients, yeah. uh, watch their technique, and it gives the faculty a chance to stop and say, hey, that wasn't correct, you moved your hand or you touched this, it wasn't sterile. It gives us a chance to show them what the mistake yeah. was so they can improve. And if they drop it, they can't just quickly pick it back up. Right, there's, you, there's no five second it. rule. Yeah, like, <laughs> no five second you're like rule. hey, you, you messed up right here. <laughs> we yeah. saw it. Yeah, there's there's no five second rule in healthcare. It doesn't work that way. That's you don't great. blow it off and try again. Yeah. No. Um, what are you most excited about for the future? Um, we love the actual teaching. Yeah. I love watching the light bulb moment when you've got that kid who just isn't going to get it and they're trying and trying and trying and then all of a sudden they just flourish. That That's why we do what we do. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, the university is teaching centric. We're, we're student centered. So uh, for us, it's all about the students first. Yeah. And um, we're, we're grooming future nurses for Wayne and its surrounding counties. Yeah. That's why this program is so important here. Um, yeah, the traditional day kids are probably gonna go home to mom and dad and from whatever states they're yeah. from. Um, but the commuter program at night, those folks are already part of this community. They live in a reasonable drive of this building. Yeah. So we're hoping that that helps to bring, you know, future healthcare providers to Wayne and its surrounding counties. That's the mission of the university and that's what we hope to do. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, for the future too, and I don't know, you guys would know better, but I mean, there's going to be a demand for nursing. Like that's oh, not going anywhere. It's already started. Yeah. And you've got to remember, COVID did not help matters. No, is it? Those nurses are burnt out yep. and they're leaving. Then you've got to deal with the baby boomers who are turning, what, 57, 58 yeah. this year? How many 60 year old nurses do you see pulling 12 yeah. hour shifts in Absolutely. the hospital? So it's just, I mean, the baby boomers, we knew that was going to, we're going to have a huge amount of nurses retiring. Yeah. Now you've added pandemic burnout to it. Yeah. So yes, this is truly a need, especially for rural North Carolina Absolutely. where we're sitting right now. Absolutely. And that's what Dr. Kroom vision. So yeah. Anything else we need to talk about in here? Do we want to go take a look around? Well, we just want everybody to know that we are um, currently stocking this lab. Um, we are accepting donations of any kind. We're asking anybody with uh, doctors, anything expired. You know, with the doctor's office, they've got that, you know, box yeah. of alcohol swabs. Well, they expire. You can't use them on patients. But these people We don't can care. use them on here. They don't complain. So please don't throw anything out. Call us. We, old equipment, you've got to retire. Yeah. These beds were all donated by Wayne UNC. Awesome. All five of the hospital beds. We've had local pediatricians donate uh, newborn scales. We've got a centrifuge now. We have so anything that you think you might want to throw away, please don't. Gloves, IV tubing, we'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it because we will not use it on any human beings. It's yeah. always Lean on the men. Oh yes, Pamlico uh, County Health Department. Oh, Lynn Hardison is a phenomenal director down there. Just anybody knows she's a great boss. 
she's got lots of open positions. <laughs> yeah, um, they all do but right now. But she, she, she cleaned out her cabinets and gave us all kinds of donations. I, uh, Car Very Carolina nice. East did that too. Oh, yes. Carolina East gave us a ton. They cleaned out drawers of IVs and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So we'll take any donations at all. That's that's a good point. I never yeah. thought about that. You don't yeah. have to worry about the expiration. Oh yeah. yes, yes. And I think we actually have a defibrillator coming from a Sim Center in Charlotte as oh, well. Wow. Right. And I mean, what does expensive equipment oh, yeah. even used? Yeah. So we're open to any donations of people. Please bring them to us. And of course, we take cash donations. That's about two grand in mannequins sitting wow. right there. That's crazy. In, in my personal donation yeah. to this lab. So, if people are interested in the program, where do they need to go to learn more? Uh, UMO.edu. Okay. Uh, if they just look for nursing, um, we have a website that has every single program there. Our admissions team is phenomenal in answering questions. You can always reach Dr. Niles and I. We're, cool. We give our cell phone numbers out to everybody. So you can awesome. text us, reach out to us. We answer and field emails, any questions people have. We have uh, admission days here several times a year. I think they just had one this past Saturday where you can come and tour the lab. Um, or they can set it up with admissions, and we're happy to meet people privately if they want to walk through. Awesome. And the other thing we want to make sure everybody knows is uh, our day program in particular is athletic friendly. Oh, okay. I want to yeah. say about 99% of the students that are being considered for the day program are collegiate athletes. Interesting. So we are, we're small and we intend to give those students the opportunity to play all four years of their sport. That's, that's great. So that's, that's been a... A wonderful blessing for us. I've got to ask you as well. You guys are both doctors. What did you do previously? Is this something you guys have always done? Or? I've been a nurse for 47 years. I've been an educator for 30 years. Wow. Yeah, so at the community college. So, yes, education is what I've always done. Yeah. Except when I was in critical care for nursing. Awesome. How about you? Yes, I, I've been a nurse for over 25 years. And um, I started teaching, my very first teaching job was at ECU in 2004. Okay. I started teaching pre-licensure BSN at ECU. Yeah. I came here in 2011 and started the nursing programs here. So awesome. I've been here for 10 years, going on 11 now. Cool, should have started yeah. with that. But I like to find out, you know, kind of what people, <laughs> what their backgrounds are too. So, um, okay, so do we want to go take a look at the high fidelity area? Yeah, now? we'd That's love to really show cool. you around, cool. absolutely. So we're going to move over to the high fidelity sim and uh, we'll check in just a minute. All right, so we are in the uh, high, high fidelity. fidelity sim room. I like that, the HD version of 4K, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, this is the mannequin. What's his name? Well, this is Dr. Tom Morris. Dr. Tom. We call him Mr. Tom, Dr. Tom. Dr. Tom, and Tom is sitting here blinking. He just coughed. Uh, and, and he's living and breathing, essentially. Yes. I mean, we can yes. see his vitals right here. Yes. And you have a female right across the hall here, right across through the that can give birth? Correct. Literally can push a baby out. And the, the baby is also a simulator. A, a, so a we high can, fidelity version. We can run an entire NICU event right there with that baby as well. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So so what are you guys using this for? What will this be used for? So we can set up simulations where uh, you're gonna give a certain type of medication, for example. Uh, it's a blood pressure med. So we're gonna ask you, what, is the, what does the drug do? What do you expect the interaction to be? What do you expect if it goes wrong? What, yeah. you know? So if you, for example, were to push an IV medication, IV medications go into effect within 12 seconds, it has an effect. So then we're going to say, okay, well, your patient's tacking off right now. What are you going to do? Yeah. Boom. And now you've got to come in. I'm going to move the patient here. I'm going to check this vital sign. I'm going to ask these questions. This, this man, again, um, will sweat. He'll have seizures. He will pee the bed. He will, he will talk in multiple languages. Um, <laughs> depending on what the control room yeah. Uh, wants him to do, he can respond in any way. We can make him code right now, flatline. Yeah, his heart Boom. rate's already now going you, up. Exactly. Now you go into full CPR mode. We can shock him for real. Um, so this is where you can actually, this mannequin will actually do more than anything we're going to need a baccalaureate level of nursing. Yeah. But we, 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 we purchased him, and just so you know, he's a Laridol 3G Sim Man Plus. The we are the second, second. one in the world to have one. Second one in the Fresh world. off the assembly That's line. That's crazy. So here we are going to YouTube trying to see if we can learn. It's like <laughs> YouTube is from, it's like looking at an iPhone 7 instruction right. with an iPhone 13. Right. You know, it's like, but that's not where the button is. I yeah. don't, so we've had to really pay attention to learn about him. 
uh, but he's phenomenal. We can open this lab up to train all of our local healthcare providers yeah. if they need a training day. Uh, physicians at the hospitals could come, your EMT folks, your paramedics. I'm not an expert, but his heart rate has yeah. changed. Yeah, well, there you go. See, that's bad. So that's what would not you do? Good. What would you Extreme do? Extreme Brady mm. or something. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like he needs CPR. You think? Yeah, probably. So you got to move the bed to CPR mode and then start chest compression. Uh, well, I don't know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, see, there you go. But that I'm is glad what you brought for. that up because mm -hmm. our EMS staff, every, every year, I think, I don't know, they go through boards where they, same kind of thing. You gotta okay. drill it. You walk in, there's a patient on the ground, what do you do? And they're talking about the different medications. Exactly. But they're just having to do it orally. They're not able to, you know what I'm saying? So I, that, I mean, your nursing students it's are gonna have a- It's a great opportunity to collaborate absolutely. and have you folks come to the university. We set aside time in the sim lab yeah. and let all of your folks train with a mannequin that'll actually respond to yeah. you. But I mean, so. it just it's gonna put your students light years oh, ahead yeah. too. I mean, yeah. that's what's really cool this about is, it. This is really important, especially after everything we learned from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, unfortunately, caused a lot of the hospitals to close their doors to training. Um, and it was for safety reasons, of course, but um, this gives us the opportunity to continue training even if for some reason our hospital systems were to say, sorry, you know, COVID-25, we, yeah. we can't have you. Yeah. Um, but this is really a good opportunity, again, fully recorded yeah. audio and video where they can debrief and see themselves actually engaging with a simulator that will respond like yeah. real life. Yeah, that's crazy. It's as close to real life as we can get short of putting you in the bed and having you act. Yeah. You also were talking about some interesting things about the program too. People can get a degree before they finish. Correct. So we have, if anybody's interested in nursing, as soon as they hit admissions, uh, admissions will evaluate the classes they may have already taken at other schools or if they need to start from scratch with us. We have an Associate of Science and General Studies, which is pre-nursing focused. So for the 60 hours of general education that you need, no matter what nursing school you go to, yeah. um, we actually give you a degree for your 60 hours of time. Uh, during the sophomore year, when you're finishing up the classes, that's when you apply to us for the junior and senior year. All of those general ed classes will then move on to our BSN degree sheet, so you spend the next 60 hours focusing on nursing. So you walk out basically with two degrees. You get an associate degree in gen studies, for your gen ed, yeah. and then you move into the BSN, and so you walk across the stage Saturday, come back Monday morning a junior, yeah. earning your second degree. Wow. Um, if for some reason you don't get into nursing, like we only take 50 students day and 50 students night, let's say you're number 66. Yeah. It's no fault of your own, yeah. I only have so much space. Then we have multiple degrees around here that also serve you don't have to be a nurse yeah. to be functioning in healthcare, uh, healthcare management, human services. We have a wonderful psychology department that also can train you to be a clinical psychologist yeah. at the graduate level. So we have a lot of other opportunities here at the university for folks that may not get into nursing the yeah. first time around. Um, and again, not for any fault of their own, yeah. but just because we're limited in space based on clinical size, based on the ability of what we can house here in the lab, and then of course based on faculty. Yeah. So. And it's competitive too. It's very competitive. You have to have a minimum GPA of a 3.0 in that general education yeah. to even be a qualified applicant for us. Yep. Um, and then once you're in the program. This is the part that scared me. Yeah, we have a B minus wall. <laughs> So if you get a C, you're done. You're done. We move you to another major. I don't think they would even let me in. Like it would be like, oh, nah, you're no, not you, good enough. You'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised. Again, a lot of our students that are coming in for this first class are athletes, and I'll tell you, those are some high performers. Absolutely. You don't, you don't turn that on and off. So we fully expect them to do an outstanding job, and their their academics are already, yeah. you know, well. Absolutely. Um, they do a great job, but. Um, but yeah, we, we have a B minus wall, so you get a C, we're gonna be moving you to another major. And we've made sure that all the other majors on this campus will absorb all that time in nursing. You don't lose any of your yeah, credits. It'll yeah. all move into an elective box and you move forward in whatever major you've yeah. chosen. So we always tell people have a backup plan. <laughs> Uh, it's it's yeah, important. No, it is. It is. It's it's important. Absolutely is. Now, we do absolutely everything we can with remediation. That's why these high fidelity mannequins are so important. Yeah. If you're truly having a problem, then we set up remediation time yeah. and you and I, faculty to student, would come in here and practice and drill and practice yeah. because a lot of students, especially adult learners, 
you have to see it, you've got to touch it. Yeah. It's the see one, do one, teach one kind yeah. of theory. Um, so some people need more than just the book. They need that tactile, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just a, it, this is a great opportunity to learn and Absolutely. really test your abilities. Again, thank you for all the time today. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, but I encourage you to go check out the University of Mount Olive. If you have questions about it, give them a call. They have information on the website, and uh, it really is a really cool program here. Yeah, so, Dr. You. Joy, thank you for all the time thank today. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll see you again soon right here on Wayne TV.